Hey guys, it's Issa back. Um, today I'm going to be talking about male faces. Uh, so male faces, um, the biggest issue that some students have is that they become overly feminine. Uh, and the most important thing, you're always going to have a gender that you can draw better. Um, and that's just how it works. The way we record memory, the way we idealize beauty, the, um, the media around us and what we have. Uh, ex we're exposed to, what we are used to seeing, what our favorite characters are, what our favorite styles are, anime. There are so many things bombarding us um, on a constant uh, stream uh, that the, most likely 90% of the time I could say, um, uh, and I don't know how accurate that number is, but based on my experience, uh, artists and students can draw females better than males. Um, and the reason why that is, is because of, uh, again, these pre predispositions. Uh, so the way to counter it is to always expose yourself to reference when dealing with male faces. The key to a male face is that it's the, it is the opposite of a female face. Uh, just think of it like that to stay simple. I have a lot of videos, um, and one video in my history that discusses the difference between male uh, and female, elf and the ogre. Uh, but this particular uh, video, I'll, I'll cover the, like the, the specific little details here and there outside of the general differences. So yes, the triangle is inverted. The beauty triangle is uh, wider at the base instead of at the top. So eyes are smaller, nose is bigger, mouth is bigger. Instead of eyes are bigger, nose is small, mouth is smallest. Uh, so when we're dealing with a male face, it's, it's, it's not just the eyes are smaller, it's the eyes are closer together. So look at the ratio and the way these paintings develop here. And these are two separate studies where I did male faces. One is more finished than the other. Um, and uh, you can see that the no, I'm so sorry if you can hear like mowing and all that in the background. There's just like landscapers working. Um, uh, so the nose width uh, is actually wider than the uh, eye line, than the lines that coming out of the inside uh, of the eyes. Uh, so if we were to draw the symmetry line, the nose would be wider than the space in between the eyes, technically. Um, and the space between the eyes is determined by the line that projects vertically from the inner corners of the tear ducts. Um, so that singularly does so much for the face. Also nose size. Yes, we've talked about nose size being significantly important for developing a male read. Um, and don't forget to you know, enlarge the other one. You can't just lengthen the nose and hope for a male face because that it creates a very, very feminine nose. Long but thin is very feminine. Um, and there is a lot, there are a lot of variations of female beauty. Um, and one of them is older female with a longer face. That's very, very feminine. Just think like gazelle or deer face. Um, it reads very, very feminine. It's not always short, stubby, chibi style beauty elf. Sometimes it's long and beautiful. So be very, very careful not to over lengthen noses. As you can see here, and I do correct this eventually, the, the painting on the left uh, is has a very long nose. And, and I do have long face syndrome. I had it since I was a kid. <laughs> since I started drawing, I talk about it like it's a disease. Um, but, uh, but long face is something I suffer from. So I do have a lot of that. And I adjusted that as soon as a student recommended it on the stream. And I was streaming these uh, processes here. Uh, but uh, another really, really significantly important factor to not making a male face overly feminine is cheekbones. Be very, very careful with rounded cheekbones. Cheekbones isn't really talked about when we talk about Elf and the Ogre because it's just a simple recording of like almost cartoony uh, differences that are easy to read instantly in cartooning. But when we add more realism, we have cheekbones to paint in. And how do we apply cheekbones that feel masculine but at the same time have a, you know, a presence. Uh, we can't just shave the cheekbones off completely. Uh, so cheekbones are very low for men and very not bulbous. They're not circular and high like females. Uh, so the difference would be um, basically a bulb kind of cheekbone sitting under the eye uh, and men sits beside the nose. Do you understand? So it's not directly above the nose. It's kind of beside. So that very, very first brush stroke that you do uh, for the shadow of the cheekbones, keep it more beside the nose than above the nostrils beneath the eyes. Uh, that's really the biggest giveaway there. Um, uh, another big thing is lip thickness. So male lips are very, very thin. 
um, and uh, that the, we don't like to add volume to them. If you add volume to the male lip, it will read as extremely feminine, kind of like lip gloss or lip liner or some kind of makeup has, has been applied. And there are a lot of pe men who wear makeup and um, uh, kind of like makeup enthusiasts and they wear lots of makeup and they try to make their face as feminine as possible uh, from drag to whatever is out there on YouTube. Um, but uh, uh, they, they do accentuate the, the size of their mouth to get that female read. So be very careful when you're painting. If you want, a fe a, you want the male read, you want a painting that looks like a male, not a female wearing a beard, no, an actual male, male with a beard, uh, make sure the, thin, the lips are nice and thin. Then the chin. The chin has to be uh, pretty strong, pretty low, and the thickness of the neck has to be a lot thicker than a female. You don't want that sort of, for lack of a better term, pencil neck look, like a lollipop, um, you know, a big head and a thin neck. Uh, there's a really, really great movie that I want you guys to watch. Um, it's a, it's a, it shows a really, really good um, transition between uh, feminized, masculine, weak uh, body to masculine, which is the transition between Captain America before the serum and after the serum. I, I believe it's the first Captain America movie. Um, and you can see the way they uh, uh, used his face, yeah, but they, they superimposed his face on a thinner man's body. But the neckline is really what makes it happen. It's that neck being very, very thin versus the thick neck after the serum when he comes out all strong out of the weird little capsule. Uh, so that's a wonderful resource for artists just to compare the two. Uh, it's not about the face like, all the time. Sometimes it's about the neck width and the musculature outside of the face. Um, the, ch the jawline, I believe, is also adjusted in the movie, though I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yes, the jawline needs to be very, very wide, and, and this is the key term, and these are all sh should be notes you guys are writing down. Uh, the, the, the key term is squared, uh, squared jawline. Female jawlines are not squared, they're very circular, and when you are trying to make a female feel strong or tomboy or she's um, a strong masculine type figure female, um, you can give her a thicker jawline. Not as thick as a male, because then it'll just look uncanny. Um, and that's the kind of the issue here, is that you can get a little bit uncanny uh, when you mix this stuff up. As for eyes, eyes are uh, a little tricky. Um, you can get away with a lot with eyes. Eyebrows, no. Eyebrows, got to go flat. You've got to flatten the eyebrow for a male face. Um, if you don't flatten the eyebrow, you are using the most absolute powerhouse of the female read, which is the eyebrow arc, that strong eyebrow arc, that defined uh, bend in the eyebrow at the temple line is, is very, very feminine. It is strictly feminine, where you can say cheekbones can be altered between male and female, so compare Mads Mikkelsen's face to um, Eva Green's face. Eva doesn't have great cheekbones. She's got very flat eyebrows, and she still gets away with it, but she has this very, very large, um, uh, kind of like thick eyebrow, but she does have moments where her eyebrow arc is still there, um, and Mads Mikkelsen's cheekbones uh, can be very, very feminine, if looked at in a certain way, but his eyebrows, if they were you know, arced like a female, it would just be a female. It would just be a very masculine-looking, athletic-looking female. Um, so the eyebrow arc is strictly female. Uh, strictly female. Not all females have it. Like I said, Eva Green's eyebrows are very flat, uh, but um, uh, you want to be able to get a read in your cartoons. We're not talking about the nuances of photorealism here. We're not expecting you to copy, you know, pixel for pixel off a reference and then just trust the reference to do the rest. It's not about that. It's about you independently, independently being able to create a cre uh, being, to, to create something, uh, a person, to make a person. Uh, so uh, that flat eyebrow is essential for masculine faces. So I'm looking at these paintings and I wouldn't call them my best uh, at all. They were studies simply. Uh, they have a lot of mistakes. Right off the bat, the cheekbone on this guy on the left is very, very weak. Uh, the progress on the one on the left, on the right, um, was a little slower because I was focusing on the eyes and the eyebrows. I really had a specific thing I was seeing in my mind for it, and I, and I wanted to get that across, whereas the front view was a little bit, uh, you know, whatever goes, whatever happens, along with my reference. I didn't really care too much about 
uh, creating a person. So you can see my process difference as well. One is more um, trust the reference and then move forward and then alter as you go because this looks nothing like my reference, but I do borrow the shadows. Uh, whereas the one on the right, um, sorry, that was the one on the left. The one on the right it, it was strictly reference free and I tried as much as I can to um, uh, just do everything on my own, make all the decisions on my own, make sure that I'm seeing um, and the painting exactly what I see in my mind and that process is always slower. Uh, so uh, to, 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 to preserve the mail it's to add up all these tiny little adjustments and allow them to, to, to read. It's, it's, it's about every single one of these being addressed. You go through the list and check uh, off your list as you go. You can't really forfeit any one of those because you do end up in the uncanny valley. You end up somewhere where androgyny isn't androgyny isn't something you, that a portfolio needs. Uh, androgyny is not gender diversity is something that a portfolio needs because you want to show that you have a design power and a trustable a trustable skill set or trustworthy skill set. Um, uh, but you can't uh, have androgyny there and just say, well, I'm part of the androgyny business movement, whatever it is, um, and that would be your excuse out of getting in some good studies. Um, uh, androgyny is not for everyone. It's not media friendly. It's not production friendly. Um, and it is closer to being an, uh, uncanny than it is actual androgyny because androgyny for it to happen uh, you have to have a starting gender. You have to have a gender that the character was originally or the character is supposed to be or the character is. And then by adding either a plump lip or a slight eyebrow arc or, you know, accessory, secondary, um, uh, binary, I guess, um, uh, additions that dress up the pre-existing male base with female accessories. So I would call them accessories. So you accessorize the starting gender with the opposite gender. You don't actually superimpose one major gender quality with another gender quality because that's uncanny. What you do is you have a starting gender that reads solid as male or female and then dress it up. Like I said with the male jaw, females can have a strong jaw but it can be slightly uh, larger than usual for it to read as a stronger female or like stronger physically like a weightlifter or a tank or something like that. Um, uh, those are very, very specific, uh, you know, very abstract topics I'm covering that you don't really appreciate until you do the studies yourself or observe faces. Be an active observer. Uh, try to be as, uh, you know, active in the way that you observe people um, uh, when you talk to them as you are while you're painting. So you don't always have to have a paintbrush for you to study. Um, you can be seeing faces all the time. So sometimes I see people's faces and I'm like the only one in the room that will mention a specific feature of that person. And everyone thinks I'm a freak for <laughs> paying so close attention to someone's face. But I explain to them, I'm a portrait artist. I'm an artist. I, I, this is my job. So it's, it's absolutely normal for me to be assessing the width of your, of your eyebrows compared to your eyes. Um, and, or, or, or the, the, the way your nose is shaped or something like that. It's just the stuff that I record. Um, at one point or another, we're going to be staring at people, uh, so uh, be prepared for that. And uh, it's it's it, I wouldn't call these studies successful. Um, they're not failures, but I definitely have to uh, step up my game for male faces. I feel like I've dominated the arena for female faces, and I and I've kind of gotten what I wanted out of that. Uh, but um, male faces do have a very very specific world in and of themselves, uh, that the slight gesture, the smile, um, the stare, the, d the dark eye, it's, it's really, really uh, difficult to figure all this stuff out if all you're drawing is females and, and you're, you're, you know, you're doing one male study every couple months. So make sure that you guys are studying, you're not waiting for a long time uh, before you jump into the next uh, study of a male face. Don't spend three months drawing female only. 14 day challenges or something like that. You do a male 14 day challenge and a female 14 day challenge, a three quarter view for each, side view for each, and you're, you become a powerhouse. Of, uh, your your skill set becomes mastered. It becomes very easy for you to generate the design that you want to design um, and when you need it. Uh, so thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I invite you to try uh, one male study and one female study and put them side by side and put them up on critique on the Discord. 
uh, so we can take a look at them. Most likely you will have features that are uncannily overlapped, um, and I'm curious to see where you guys sit with that. So um, thank you everyone for your patronage. Your support is, is unbelievable. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that the Discord is growing to 50 plus people. Um, it's amazing. The community is definitely getting stronger. Everyone's getting to know each other. Um, and it's just been a blast. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you guys next month. Bye.